Chris, I just kind of want to talk about, this is a get to know the candidates for yeah. everybody. So when did you decide to run and why are you running? I decided to run last year, late last year actually. Um, I retired from my dental practice in January of two, uh, 2022. And so I had more time in my hands. I had a history of being involved in the city, uh, in city government as Commissioner of Public Safety mm -hmm. for six years. I was also on the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals for seven years and, and uh, was chair of that for a few years. Um, and so I started attending city council meetings um, and expecting to be in, in, in agreement with most of what I was seeing from my my Democratic colleagues. I have been on the Democratic Committee in Silver Springs for years. And I was very surprised what I was seeing, especially from there. Uh, the mayor uh, was someone that I'd known for years and I, we supported him during the last election. I fully expect him to be ma making uh, rational decisions mm -hmm. um, and uh, well, you know, well thought out decisions. And I was very surprised at what I saw. And as the year progressed, I was more and more disappointed. And some people were talking to me about the possibility of having me run for mayor. It wasn't certainly uh, something that I was uh, ever thinking of uh, independently. You didn't consider it yourself. You were approached. No, I, 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 this certainly wasn't part of my plans. People started suggesting to me. I was responding to a lot of the issues that John Coffin was, was uh, bringing up on, on his blog. Mm -hmm. um, and I think some people saw what I was saying and, and suggested maybe I should consider running. Um, you know, it's tough being mayor anyway. Um, as a retired person, I would have more time to do it. For a working person, it's really hard to do. So I guess in some ways, it, it, uh, it, I guess it may be my time. Right, Saratoga is still part-time mayor? Well, I wouldn't call it part-time. There's really no definition of how much time you put in. Uh, and when I look back upon my years as Commissioner of Public Safety, I worked, uh, I was running my dental practice, so I would start my practice in the morning, and then I would run to City Hall at lunchtime and then run back to my, see my patients in the afternoon. I did that for six years. And then evenings and then weekends, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. I was doing stuff for the city. Uh, so to try to put uh, into uh, hours how, many, how much time I was spending, it would be very difficult to do. Uh, Skip Scirocco, who was also a retired person when he was Commissioner of Public, Public Works, uh, probably put as much time as a, as a full-time worker would. Um, most of the commissioners or, and mayors weren't able to do that because they also had outside positions. Um, the physician pays $14,500 a year. So if you're raising a family, you can't do that. That's the commissioner. Thousand. The commissioner and the mayor get fourteen. dollars It's all equal. It's mission yeah. form of government. All, everybody gets the same, uh, the same pay. So we all get $14,500 a year at this point in time. And it's been $14,500 a year um, since the very early 2000s, when it, when it was raised by $500, it just never kept pace with its, with, with reality. So um, and the demands of the job. Right. So people who are uh, in in this position obviously are going to tend to have outside positions too. Yeah, that's in, it's fascinating. Yeah. Uh, you know, other big cities, it's full time jobs. Other big cities pay a lot more, and it's it's reasonable to ask a person to do that, but. This is a very different kind of uh, form of government. We do have full-time deputies who are there on our behalf during the day. So I had a great deputy, Eileen Fitter was a great deputy when I was Commissioner of Public Safety mm -hmm. and, and she kept good tabs on, on the office when I wasn't there. And she had already served uh, uh, as uh, Deputy Mayor and Deputy Commissioner of Public Safety. In fact, she served as Deputy Commissioner of Public Safety under Ron Kim when he was Commissioner of Public Safety in, in the 2000s. 2006, between 2006 and 2009. So, yeah, um, I, you know, I had someone who knew the department really well. That was important. Um, but uh, yeah, you, you put in as much time as you can. So, day one, you get elected. What is the first thing you want to tackle? First thing I want to tackle, uh, I want to just bring some calmness and some order to City Hall. Um, I think that's the. From, you know, again, I was spending a lot of time walking the streets, getting my petition signed to get into the primary and also to get the one Saratoga petition signed, the line I'm on, uh, so we could get on the ballot. So I lost the primary, but I'm on the ballot on one Saratoga. I talked to so many people, and so many people are most concerned about behavior on the city council. Um, the, the antagonism among, among city council members is just I've, is something that I've never seen before. Um, and the fact that, that oftentimes we've had mob rule during city council meetings um, is really hard to fathom. 
people are sitting there feeling unsafe in their own city council meeting. The bad language, um, the the aggressive uh, behavior on the part of some people in the in the in the council meetings, and the mayor does nothing to correct them. He doesn't comment. He just lets it go on. How would you handle things differently? I would comment. <laughs> I would set aside uh, guidelines. First of all, the five members of the city council are executives, but they're also the legislatures of the legislators of the city. They're the only representatives that we have. So when people are coming to comment. Um, during the public comments portion of the city council, we need to know who the, who the Sar Saratoga citizens are mm -hmm. and who the people are from outside the city. We're responsible for the, to the Saratoga Springs city citizens. The people who live outside the city, yes, their comments are, can be important, but not as important as the people we're supposed to be representing. So I think you need to stick to that. Mr. Kim did not do that. Um, I also think that when people are misbehaving, they, 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 it gets to a point where they need to be removed from the, the, uh, the, the city council room. It's not fair to the other people there to have them continue to interrupt those meetings. And when meetings get to the point where um, the meetings are disrupted and cannot continue, which happened on February 7th and May 2nd of this year, um, there it certainly is important to hold the people who are doing that responsible, causing those kinds of problems. So you really need to hold people responsible need to expect responsible behavior uh, among everybody in the, in the room. Uh, you need to make sure that um, the council members are not making taking unnecessary pot shots at, at each other during city council meetings. Mm -hmm. You need to, to, to resolve a lot of the concerns or the, a lot of the issues regarding um, the agenda items uh, before the city council meeting so that you're not arguing about things that could have easily been straightened out prior to the meeting. Um, you need to get some rapport among members of the council. Um, I think if anybody sat down and watched the last city council meeting, they would know exactly what I, I'm saying. Mm -hmm. This week? What, yes, what should be happening. So, okay, meetings aside, what else do you think needs to happen in the city? What's your vision? Okay, some things I like that uh, uh, the, the, uh, the mayor and the council have been doing. I think they have been uh, going in the right direction in terms of using federal funds to help with um, connectivity in the city for pedestrians, for bikes, things of that sort. I've always been a real advocate of that. Um, I live on, on Friar and Tuckway, which is in the far outer parts of the city, mm -hmm. off of Grand Avenue. Out of Grand Avenue um, has, to be, it has a road service that has to be shared with vehicles and, uh, and bikes and pedestrians, and there's absolutely no place for the bikes and pedestrians to go safely. And I've talked about it for years, and, I, and when I was in the council, I said, as soon as we finished the Geyser Road Trail, which is a great thing we did, uh, the Geyser Road Trail really improved not only safety, but quality of life for people living in Geyser Crest and some of the other neighborhoods off of Geyser Road. They have full bike and pedestrian access he likes you. now yeah, to the rest of the city. Um, that is so great. Well, I kept saying, once this is done, we need to look at Grand Avenue, we need to look at Pine Road, we need to look at Kirby Road. These are streets that uh, pedestrians uh, really are putting their, themselves at risk when they try to walk along, the, along, along those roadways. Um, I like that the city has been doing that. I would certainly continue that, absolutely. Expanding connectability absolutely. outside of the absolutely. inner city limits here. You know, I, a lot of the outer neighborhoods are over, the, over the years have been forgotten, I think, and, and it was wonderful that we recognized the issues with, with uh, the Geyser Road area. Um, that had a lot to do with the fact that uh, there's a, a very um, active and vital neighborhood association out there, the Southwest Neighbor Association, and they pushed and pushed and pushed for that guy's road trail. And Matt Beach, our, our, our county supervisor, uh, who lives out there also, um, was a strong advocate for this. So it got done finally. It took like 15 years to get it done, but it finally got done. But now it's a different story now because now we have uh, funds available that we didn't have before. These federal funds can go a long way towards making real progress in, in improving connectivity. So yeah, we need to start putting uh, the safety of citizens and the quality of life of our citizens in, in these neighborhoods first. We have a great downtown. We've done so much for our downtown. And uh, you know, again, because I've seen our downtown since the 1950s, I realize and appreciate uh, all the success that we've had and, and all the progress we've made. Um, I think that we've put some of the quality of life issues for our neighborhoods on, on a back burner, and we need to really focus on that. Another issue that I came up with 
when I first ran in 2011 as Commissioner of Public Safety, um, I had been going down to Caroline Street late at night to see what was actually happening. Because I, I was having people come into my office with broken teeth and facial lacerations from uh, altercations that were happening on Caroline Street, saying, what is going on? We never had anything like that before. So I started getting up at about quarter to three in the morning and going down to, to see what was happening on Caroline Street. And I did it week after week after week because it was stunning. I have never seen anything quite like that. Uh, I didn't recognize that as being terrorists of the spring because it was so different. The, the, I mean, the level of testosterone and alcohol uh, resulted in, I, it just like, it was a, a, a un unbelievable situation. It just, you could look at the police that were trying to do the patrols and the, and the look of horror on, on their faces and realize that we were putting them in a difficult position and we were putting, putting others in, in, in danger by allowing that to happen. So I advocated at the time for an earlier last fall. And I went to the SLA when I was elected um, and we talked about that and they said they also would strongly recommend an earlier last call for Sarah for the spring. Sarah the Springs is unique. Most of the state does not have a 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. last call, um, but our county does. And um, they said that Caroline Street is so unique because not only do we have the 4 a.m. last call, but there are so many bars on top of each other. They're all in violation of what's, cons what's thought of as the 500 foot rule, mm -hmm. which means that there's supposed to be 500 feet between places that are serving out. Um, so it, it, it's very, and there's a good, there are good reasons for that because it's harder to police uh, a situation where you have so many places on top of each other. Hard to tell where the drunks came from. But you can't change that at this point. What you can change is the last call. You can change the change to an earlier last call, and we have suggested 3 a.m. It's a compromise. I, we have people were talking to him. We said 3 a.m. We had to go to the county to get approval, and the county didn't didn't really pay much attention. So. Um, that became an issue that we continued to talk about. We've never made any progress. After we brought that up, uh, Warren County uh, changed their last call from four to three, and they saw a tremendous decrease in calls because of problems having on South Street and West Falls. And then Essex County went from 4 a.m. to 3 a.m., and they saw far fewer problems uh, in Lake Placid. And th I remember the police chief of Lake Placid saying, because we all met at the SLA a few times, the police chief of Lake Placid saying, he was pushing for 2 a.m. so they would be consistent with Clinton County because the uh, 3 a.m. was such an improvement over 4. This needs to change. You know, the reputation of Saratoga Springs is extremely important. We have all these people who are moving to our downtown because it's a desirable place to be. And we have all these conventions and destinations and weddings and, and uh, various meetings and things of that sort uh, for people coming here not just in the summertime but year-round because it has a reputation as a fun place to come and also a safe place to come. Um, if you start having uh, more and more incidents downtown like we had last November, um, it becomes less of a safe place for people to come. The concept, the, the image of the Saratoga Springs is, is uh, undermined. And the image of Saratoga Springs as a fun, safe place, a safe place to be is more important than having a 4 a.m. last call. I think we need to look at our priorities and what, what the realistic impact is. But this has been more than a decade. Yeah, it's been well over a decade, yeah. So how do, how do you get in and change it? I think that we talked to the state about making some changes in terms of how a city might be able to change the determination of how what their last call is as opposed to the entire county. We have a unique situation in, in Saratoga County because the, the, the economy uh, of Saratoga Springs is very, very different than the economy of most of the municipalities around here. Um, I think if you talk to the supervisors of uh, the county, you would find that most of them don't even have established establishments that are staying open till four. So they don't really have any vested interest in keeping it open till four, but they just won't listen to the arguments that it's not safe for us uh, to, to, uh, to have what, we, what we're having now. Um, I think we talked to the state. I think, frankly, I, I know they were just uh, uh, making some changes to um, the al alcoholic beverage law in New York State uh, regarding liquor stores and how long they can open and things of that sort. I would talk to the governor and say, hey, most of the state doesn't have a 4 a.m. anyway. Why don't we change it so you make uh, 2 a.m. The, the last call across the state, and then if uh, by county by county or city by city, basis they want to in, in change it to three or four for good reasons, they would get that approval. But Do I think the opposite. A, yeah, I think they made a really big mistake when they went to 4 a.m. years mm -hmm. ago. 
when I, you know, again, when I was younger, we were out all the time. It, the bars weren't open until four, and we didn't have anything like this going on downtown at all. What is your favorite part of living in the city? Uh, it, again, I, <laughs> I grew up here, so it was a very different city when I was growing up than it is today. It was a great place to grow up. It was a sleepy little town. We were very busy for August, for the four weeks of racing. There was no SPAC yet. Um, it was uh, the rest of the, of the year. It was a quiet little college town. Uh, Skidmore College was in the midst of the city. They were over on Union Avenue, not where they are now. Uh, it was a great place to grow up. Um, when I graduated from college and then dental school, I came back here with my family to raise my kids. And it was a great place for them to grow up. It was a different city than it was for, for, for me. Um, but it was a great place for them. It's, and now my, some, of, some, of my, some of our six grandchildren are here. We have two of them living in Southern Springs. It's a great place for them, too. There are so many things that the city has now that we didn't have back then. And the quality of life in Southern Springs is very desirable. It's a really great city. Um, it's, again, our, our successful, walkable town. Um, most of our neighborhoods, like, with the exception of, of, of mine, most of our neighborhoods are very walkable, mm -hmm. as you know. Um, it's a great place for, for kids to be able to have that kind of independence. Um, I, I really have always enjoyed downtown and have always enjoyed the rest of the city. It's pretty, it's picturesque, it's near everything, it's near the North Way. I mean, um, you know, for businesses, it's a great place to do business because you're so close to other uh, metropolitan areas of the Northeast. Um, we have so much going for us, we really do. And yet our crime rates are low. Um, we don't have a lot of problems here. But they're up compared to previous years. But our, but their, but our crime rates are low compared to other municipalities and compared to the nation as a whole, our crime rates are low. Uh, I've heard that the crime rates have gone by, and they do fluctuate. But uh, in comparison with other parts of, of, the, of the country, they are not what they are in other parts of the country. It still is a relatively safe place to be. I think we need more cops in the street. I think we need a bigger police department. When I was commissioner for public safety, we had 72 cops, and I sat down one day and started calculating compared to other uh, municipalities mm -hmm. in the state per capita how many cops they had. So I figured out that Clary Springs should have about 80, 89 cops. What do and we have? That, and that was for a t that would be for a typical city. Clary Springs is very different because we have all these special activities. So in the summertime, we are so much more. busier than a typical. Where are so, we at? Yeah. What do you know? I think that we are around 74, and okay. they've been trying to increase the number, but uh, I, you know, I get to, it's a very, very busy place, and I think we need more cops. Um, we, I worked very, very hard at, at um, increasing um, the understanding of the need for the third fire EMS station that we have on that, that we now have on Heading Road. Um, when I first came into office, I, the, the, the uh, fire chief sat down with me and said. Um, this is not okay. We have parts of the city that are not being served, and a group of people from the Eastern Plateau came to me and said the same thing. We really need to do something. And there were a lot of people in the city who said, no, we don't need to do that. It's going to cost too, too much money. I just don't understand um, why some people in the city would be getting one level of service in terms of fire EMS protection, and another part of the city wouldn't. So it makes sense to me that a city which is that this large geographically would have to have three fire EMS stations. So I'm happy to see the fire, third fire EMS station. It needs to be manned, um, but I, I'm sure that's gonna be done. But I think you know that's a really important priority. And mm -hmm. you need to be able to, to say to the citizens, hey, they cost a little more because we're gonna have to hire some more people to uh, be able to man those, man those uh, the fire trucks, the fire engines, or those ambulances, but we'll do it. Another thing that happened when I became a commissioner back in 2012, um, we did not have ambulance service being provided by the fire, fire department. Uh, the firefighters were all trained as EMTs or paramedics, but we didn't do transport. And so we weren't able to generate income. And the volunteer uh, group, uh, Farragut Emerg Emergency Medical Services, went out of business around that time. And so the chief had always told me, told me that uh, we would be able to make that transition right away to having the firefighters there carry out that service, mm -hmm. and that's worked out so well. Uh, not only has it pr provided a lot more income for the city because of the service we provide, because we can bill for transport um, through the ins insurances, et cetera, um, but um, the 
coordinated service is so much better. That's why I mean the city is so much better protected. We have so many advantages over some of the towns around us, having paid firefighters, having having our police department in 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 the city. Um, it's a much safer place to go. And again, these are the things we need to make citizens aware that th these are things that are worth paying for. So mm -hmm. we need to be able to pay our firefighters uh, to be able to, uh, to to have adequate staffing. I guess my last question for you is, sure. we've got two Democrats running and a Republican, and this is a you know highly Democratic city. Yeah. Any concerns about the divide? That is one thing we're hearing. It's a divided Democratic Party right now. Do you think this is the time where that might make it challenging for a Democrat to, to win? Here's what I, I would say. You know, I was in the, uh, unlike my opponent, I've always been a Democrat. He has not always been a Democrat. Uh, I was on the Democratic committee for years. I worked really hard to get Democrats elected uh, and really hard to bring the principles of, our, of the local Democratic Party to the city. Um, and as I, I sit here in, in, the city, in the city council meetings and I watch that committee at, at the council, I'm saying, that's not at all what we were working for. That's not at all what I envisioned the Democrats were, go were going to dominate uh, city government. Uh, this is out of control. I can't imagine why the local Democratic committee and the county Democratic committee would stand behind Ron Kim. Um, I, I, I'm concerned about some of the, uh, the well, yesterday there was a statement in the paper from Ron Kim uh, regarding the zero amount file. And in the, in the statement, Ron Kim said, said, Ron Kim said, it's always been my view that because of the failure to conduct any investigation into the death of Daryl Mount, a jury trial was the only way for a final de decision to be made. Well, there was most certainly a full investigation into Daryl Mount, uh, in th into that incident. There, uh, as I said the other night at the city council meeting, I said that's a lie. That was released uh -huh. uh, on, on, on Tuesday. That's a lie. That isn't true was most definitely definitely a, a full investigation. The Travelers Insurance would never have become involved in defending the city had there not been uh, a, a full investigation. And that Marilyn Rivers, our risk and safety manager, who um, the mayor decided for reasons I don't understand to undermine and event eventually left the city, would never have allowed travelers to get involved if there hadn't been a full investigation into the incident. That's not true. And to say things like that, and to say, you know, the, the number of times that he has um, said things that are not true, the number of times he has said things that are uh, seem aggressive, the number of times he's lost his temper politically, or publicly, et cetera, et cetera. I don't understand why Democrats would be uh, supporting him at all. So I'm the only person in the in West Virginia who's always been a Democrat. I'm the only person who's running who's been who spent years on the Democratic committee to try to uh, bring some. Um, uh, some sort of balance to city government because at one point in time the Democrats had very little role in, in city government. Um, I, I should be the person that they should be supporting. I guess anything else you think is important to share? We well, kind of all important. I mean, there's all there's also the travelers uh, insurance issue that uh, we we found out about. If you look back at John Coffin's blog, you'll see that a lot of us in 2022 were suggesting that Travelers was not going to be very thrilled with the way Ron Kim was treating them last year, mm -hmm. um, and that uh, they were he was certainly jeopardizing that relationship, which had been so successful for so long. It, we had a very successful rela relationship with Travelers. The combination of, of the uh, uh, liability insurance that they were, cover that they were providing and, and Marilyn Rivers, the risk and safety uh, officer who was so good at coordinating with them and, and saving the city many, many thousands of dollars uh, from situations where otherwise there might have been lawsuits against the city. Um, it just made no sense whatsoever to jeopardize that relationship and to undermine Marilyn Rivers. Um, again, one of the reasons I was, was running and one of, the, one of the reasons I was so dismayed at Ron Kim was because he seemed to have, an, have it in for Maryland Rivers as soon as he got into office. It made no sense at all. There's another issue. There are a lot of issues. <laughs> I have a lot of issues. And you're ready to come in and fix them? Yeah, I'm ready to bring, to bring some peace and tranquility to, and, and logic to city council meetings. Um, I'm ready to um, do the best I can to 
develop positive relationships with all four members, uh, four other members of the council, so that mm -hmm. we work together. Um, I also, when I was on, I was public safety commissioner. We had done a number of uh, pub of, of uh, public forums, so people could come in to talk to us, the, the police chief, fire chief, code enforcement, etc., about any concerns they had, and we would tell them where we were and what was going on with our departments. And there was a great give and take because you can't really do that during a city council meeting, and we did that a number of times each year. Um, and I would definitely bring that uh, uh, type of effort uh, to the mayor's department because. We don't hear enough from our citizens. There are so again, there are so many things that um, citizens, I think, feel frustration over. That they feel they, they feel like they're not not being heard. Even the the people who are the va activists uh, that who have been, been so vehement during the city council meetings, I think they really feel that they need to be heard. And there are ways of doing that. I think there are ways of improving those those relations. I think. The activists need to, hear, need to hear from the, the, the citizens of the city, and the citizens need to hear, hear from the activists. Um, but I, I was extremely upset and, and, and very dismayed by um, the, the restorative justice resolution that Ron Kim brought forth. I think the restorative justice re resolution was sensible and made sense, and I agree with it. But the comments, or the terms that he used, were way too harsh. He described Terry Springs as a, as a place with a history of racism um, and hate. I've lived here since 1954. I'm part of that history. I don't know a lot of people who are racist or full of hate. I mean, I really don't. If it's a, if it's a city full of racism and hate, where are all those people? I mean, I've come across a few racists over my years and a very few people I would consider full of hate. But it, we grew up in the 50s and 60s and we grew up in during the time of, of uh, the civil rights movement and Yes, our parents had maybe some prejudices and you know some attitudes that um, were not uh, as open as they should have been. But our generation was not like that at all. I think we were very well influenced by what was happening back then. And so I don't see racism and hate here at all. And I think that using the, that, those kinds of characterizations isn't good for the city and isn't fair to us. 